Hi guys, um, in this video we will be looking at the topic of child development, particularly on some of the ways to communicate with your unborn child. We have prepared this video based on our experience of working with professionals, working with children, families, psychologists, social workers, psychiatrists, pediatricians, midwives, health visitors, teachers and children mentors. Today we're going to discuss or focus on pre-birth communication, its benefits and whether there is any evidence or, or um, there are consequences of talking to your child while, while in the womb. Let's start with this statement. What people say around you while you are pregnant can severely affect you and your baby in the womb. That sounds startling? Well, let's consider this scenario. It is well documented that unborn babies are adversely affected when their mothers are the victims of domestic violence. Domestic violence can communicate long and lasting emotional trauma to the unborn child. What is domestic violence? Briefly, the Secure Court of California states that Domestic violence can be physical, sexual, emotional, and verbal. A physical means when the perpetrator is kicking, punching, shoving, slapping the victim, or pushing, burning, biting, choking the victim. False or presumed or pressured sexual act is another form of domestic violence. It can also be emotional. This includes when the perpetrator's behavior displays excessive jealousy, crazy making, mind games, isolating the victim from friends and family, making the victim feel worthless and making the victim feel fear, threat or intimidation. Verbal domestic violence includes name calling and putting down. There are other forms of domestic violence including controlling the victim's economic status, and basic means withholding money and prohibiting the victim to work, destruction of the victim's property, vandalism and harming or killing pets. Dr. Alicia Lewandowski, uh, a, a psychology professor of Michigan State University, found that there is a link between abuse of pregnant women with emotional and behavioural trauma symptoms in children within the first year of their life. And the symptoms observed in the children include nightmares, being frightened easily, being bothered by loud noise and bright lights and other problems. Similarly, music and sound can reduce stress in mother and unborn baby. Fred J. Schwartz in an article called Perinatal Stress Reduction, Music and Medical Cost Savings, published in 1997, he examined the importance of the fetal auditory environment as a conduit for communication and learning. As approximately, he found that at approximately 20 weeks into pregnancy, a baby can hear sound, and at about 26 weeks, a baby can begin to react to sound and external stimuli. Sounds like singing, talking, playing music to your baby while in the womb are ways of communicating to an unborn child and it becomes quite important during the last 10 weeks of pregnancy. At the early stages, when a pregnant mother is talking, when a pregnant woman or mother is talking, the vibration from the mother's voice travels through a body to the womb. A baby is more receptive to his or her mother's voice as it is louder than noises from the outside world. Between 20 and 24 weeks, a baby begins to recognize the deeper tone of his or her father's voice. This research was carried out by Shahidullah S and HEPA PG in 1992 and it's recorded in an article called Hearing in the Fetus Prenatal 
detection of deafness, published an international journal of prenatal and perinatal studies, and the reference is four open bracket three to four close bracket colon two three five to two hundred and forty. Sound travels through the pregnant mother's body because the ear has three parts the outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. The middle ear contains three bones which are the main conductors of sound. They amplify and transfer sound to the inner ear. The inner ear is the last spot before the brain. It contains the cochlea, which changes sound into neurological signals and the auditory nerves take sound to the brain and other parts of the body, including the womb. Talking to your unborn baby can create a strong bond and positive attachment between you and your child. There are many ways of communicating with your unborn baby and they include reading a book to your unborn child, speaking positive words to your unborn baby. You may find that your baby may respond to your voice by kicking or nudging you. You can respond to your baby by nudging back and rub your belly. Talking to your unborn baby helps your child to develop early communication skills. Infants respond well to music as the, the lilting melody combined with words, pitch, intonation and phrasing helps the baby to learn. But please, 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 take care not to damage your baby's ears because headphones should never be placed directly on the pregnant belly because the frequencies can damage or destroy the hair cells in the unborn baby's ear. This was the finding of Graben, S.N. and Brown J.D. in 2008 in an article called Auditory Development in the Fetus and Infant in Newborn Infant and Nursing Reviews. Communicating with an unborn child can be deliberate. It, can, it has to be child-centered and the outcome of which should benefit the child or should be in the child's best interest. The effective way of communicating with the unborn child is to combine creatively verbal and non-verbal form of communication. By verbal, I mean talking, singing, playing music. By non-verbal, I mean such gestures such as rubbing the belly approvingly and nudging cues. Researchers at the University of Helsinki, Finland, studied 33 pregnant women and their babies from week 29 until birth. 17 mothers listened to a CD with two four-minute sequences of made-up words. The words are tatata or tatota said several different ways with different pitches. After birth, the researchers tested the hearing of all 33 babies and performed an EEG electrocephalograph brain scan to see if the newborn responded differently to the pseudo word and different pitches. The brain activity of the babies who listened to the CD in utero increased when those words were placed while babies who did not hear the CD in the womb did not react as much. More information can be obtained about this from Mina Horty Leinen, PhD, Duracent, Finnish Centre of Excellence in Interdisciplinary Music Research, University of Helsinki, Finland. You will agree with us that neo-evolution, randomness, Darwin's theory of evolution cannot explain the many levels of complexity that have been embedded in the mother and the baby's DNA and cells to facilitate communication. 
this level of complexity could have only been created by a designer who scripted this into all human existence. It is therefore not surprising that those who believe in God communicate integrity and honesty to their unborn children through prayer. Similarly, those who believe in God spend time praying for their unborn babies and read psalms to their children in the womb. It might interest you to know that there is evidence of two babies in the womb responding when their mother were talking about their unborn babies to each other. This is recorded in the 2000 year old Christian text in Luke chapter 1 in verse 41 to 44 and you will also know that within those texts the mother left where she was originally living to go and live with her relatives relatives during the, during the course of her pregnancy to ensure that herself and her baby had an environment that was receptive because in the tradition of those days the pregnancy would not have been accepted where she was previously staying. There is also evidence of twins interacting with one another in the womb where one twin held onto the leg of the other while the twins were being born. This is reported in a Jewish historical text in Genesis 25 from verse 22 to 26. One final note on the impact on domestic violence. The United Kingdom National Health Service Pregnancy and Baby Guide states that pregnancy can be a trigger for domestic abuse and existing abuse may get worse during pregnancy or after giving birth. Domestic abuse during pregnancy puts the mother and the unborn child in danger. It increases the risk of miscarriage, infection, premature birth, and injury or death to the baby. If you are pregnant and you and your unborn baby are being abused, there is help available. You can speak in confidence to your treating doctor, midwife, obstetrician, health visitor, social worker, or you can also call the police. We hope that you have enjoyed this video presentation. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Team Edu Limited, to receive more insightful information. Please also visit our website, teenagu.co.uk. Please do not reproduce or duplicate this work without the express written permission of Teenagu Limited.